Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Tell Us a Good Story. Today, it's just Steph and I sharing some stories with our good friend, Adam Bennett. Today's topic involves April Fool's Day and the pranks that we've pulled. Hope you enjoy this episode of Tell Us a Good Story. Steph, welcome to episode 70. And we didn't think this was going to happen. No, we did not. It was touch and go there for us. Because we're doing something new. Yes, we are. We are actually having a conversation with someone in person. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tell Us Good Story, our good friend, Mr. Adam Dennis. He's back. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Man. Thank you for joining us, my friend. Certainly. So, Steph couple things. First of all, I had a conversation with the producer, Craig, okay. yesterday, and asked him how our audio levels have been in the recent episodes. And he said they've been coming in high. Aww. And this is after I turned you down. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> like right now. So, I asked him, how's our audio? He's like, you need to turn yourself down a tad. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, what about stuff? And his response in the text, turn her down two tads. <laughs> So, is that a metric unit? I have two tats? <laughs> yes. So Sorry, Craig. He had told me, and this he was, you know, being very nice. You know, he's got a trained ear. He told me that you are, quote, naturally loud. <laughs> a, a trained, injured ear. And so don't shoot the messenger here. <laughs> okay. So this is producer Craig. Oh. Trained ear is saying that you are naturally loud. I'll and get two, it. I'll get it. <laughs> So you don't he can't it. handle a strong woman to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. So speaking of you being naturally loud. Uh-huh. Okay. So we had a conversation, Adam, with Mrs. Stacy McKay a couple episodes ago. Uh, yes. It was amazing, right? She's, She's amazing. just a radio legend here in Columbus. Okay. On Sunday 95. And so during the conversation, I gave a list of fun facts on her and I saved the last one because I knew Steph was going to have a reaction. Okay. So the last fun fact about Stacey McKay is she graduated from Mount Vernon Nazarene. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, my wife went to the NAS for three years and I've never seen people so proud of their alma mater as I do with the NAS. Right. And, And so Steph screams. Right. And I almost like rip my headphones off. Okay. But Steph, when I watched the video, I think you like startled Stacey McKay yeah. because of like how loud you were. Yeah. And so, yeah, you see her, I should have said, she's just naturally loud. Please forgive her. <laughs> right? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> but, so we had joked that she should be in the Mount Vernon Hall of Fame. Yeah. Right. Stacey McKay, not me. Stacey McKay, not yes. Stephanie. Okay. Someday stuff. Someday. Someday. You played yes. softball there, right? I did. Okay. So. That's right. Maybe that's your... That's my ticket right in. There. That's not my ticket, ticket in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not first ballot. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. Good point. <laughs> You're not Griffey Jr. here. But what you <laughs> so, so I reached out to Mother Nazarene and uh, recommended Stacey McKay for like alumni, you know, their Hall magazine, their, their magazine, right. Oh. That goes out like every six months or something mm-hmm. like that. If you need a spotlight on a, you know, alumni, you should talk to this woman. Phenomenal do a story on her. Plus, if you have a Hall of Fame, I would like to nominate Stacey McKay for your Hall of Fame. Well, I soon then found out there is no Mount Vernon Hall of Fame, so <laughs> I had good intentions, but sorry. It there was is very sweet Like, I got good news and bad news. Good news, I actually tried to nominate you. Bad news, there is no Hall it. of Fame. Doesn't exist. So, Stephanie, we just had, of course... April 1st. Yep. Just came this past week as we record this. And April 1st is known for pranks, right? April Fool's Day. Okay. So that leads me to wanting to talk about some of the pranks that I guess I've done, we've done over the past, however, how many years, right? So one thing that came to my attention was last year on social media, I accidentally pranked all of our friends on social media. Okay. So Adam, what I did, it was literally a, a year ago. 
I posted a picture on social media with the caption of <laughs> good news, bad news. Good news is my COVID test came back negative. Bad news is I'm one for six. Okay. The picture had a fake test, right? And so it was, it said cocaine positive, <laughs> meth positive, <laughs> heroin positive, marijuana positive. And Pregnancy then it, gets, positive. Yes, it gets down to the last one and it's like COVID negative. All right. And so I thought it was a funny picture. I thought people would like laugh. look at laugh, look at it like, oh, that's funny. Right. He tested, he tested positive for all these illegal substances, but COVID he was negative. Adam, you would not believe the messages I got. Oh my gosh. What symptoms are you having? Where did you Why get the did test? you think you had COVID? Hey, how long did it take to get the results back? <laughs> like all these people are messaging me, asking me, I'm like, and then of course I'm on social media. Hey, look at the picture again, please. Listen, my probation officer says he in this cup. I don't have details. Right? I don't know. Yeah, what is what is he Why doing? Does with Kim? <laughs> so the joke was on me, right? So it was end up being an accidental prank because nobody got the joke. No one got it. Like, guys, look at the image again. So <laughs> So that was an accidental prank. It right? was awesome, though. <laughs> I mean, it was one of those things where I'm like, are you reading these messages or these comments? Because people are so They're not getting it. Uh-huh. freaked out that yeah. you were even tested for COVID, yes. but they could care less that you were positive Child. for your... Child Protective Services knocks on the door. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, funny man. We you need to check on the kids. <laughs> right. Friends, we want to encourage you to please follow us wherever you listen to this, whether it's on the Apple Podcast app, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or one of the other platforms. It's completely free, you guys. This helps us out big time with the folks who track this stuff. If you haven't already, we want to encourage you to please rate or even write us a review on Apple Podcast. We need as many as we possibly can, even if it's just one sentence. Thank you for listening, you guys, and sharing us with your friends. So, and then today we were talking over the dinner table about the prank your family played on me when we were dating. Oh, it was awesome. So tell Adam that story. It is so. the best thing we could have ever done. So Kevin grew up very sheltered, right? To the point where he truly believed we started dating in our early 20s. From that point, he truly believed that Jesus turned water into grape juice, not wine, grape juice and i'm like kevin it was wine like you told me that once in college how embarrassing he goes it was grape juice i remember that i let it go because i was like all right how could you let that go as a friend you shouldn't let him so bad adam still remembers that i do remember this day well it's pretty memorable stupid something i said yeah Yeah. like sheltered bless you but so sheltered Mm -hmm. so i think i think my dad of course he was a pastor i think he probably told me that um, he told you grape juice. Yes. Okay. Yes. Told me grape juice just to try to get me not to drink alcohol. That's mm-hmm. that's probably why he said that. But still. So go to a Jewish ceremony now and see if it's grape juice or wine. Well, I think that's where the story is going. <laughs> well, so I grew up Lutheran. Okay. We had communion. We always had wine, wafers. That was our communion. So one weekend, Kevin came home with me and it was communion weekend. Everyone knew that Kevin had never tried alcohol, had never, you know, never, well, communion was grape juice, so he obviously didn't get any wine there. So people are like, or my family are like, are we going to tell him? I'm like, nah, I don't think Mm -hmm. so. Let him get hammered. I think we can, we're going to watch this happen. Mm -hmm. So we all go up, and it was, (sighs) I feel guilty. No, I don't really feel guilty. It was kind of wonderful. (laughs) So we're all like kneeling. At the altar. At the altar. There's five six of us were all kneeling and instead of like having this holy moment focusing on god focusing on god we're all turned and we're watching kevin take the wine so he takes the wine thinking it's grape juice it's awesome <laughs> Again, naturally loud <laughs> She thought you had the lampshade on your head or something. He drinks the wine and he drinks it. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the wine and he like he drinks it. 
And there at the altar, he starts coughing. I coughed. And we're just like, oh. So we all put our heads down. And we're like, oh, my gosh. Don't start, start laugh. Don't start laughing. Don't start laughing. So we're like, we're trying to have this moment. We all get back to our seats. You know, you file. You stand up. Go to your seats. All sit down. And he looks at me. He's like, Bleh. did you know that was real wine? Yeah. I'm like, what? What? Bless you. I just remember, I, like, coughed. It startled me right turn and everyone's looking at me and i'm just like this is the real stuff right and <laughs> i didn't beating think his chest. Yeah, i didn't think that because there were kids taking this stuff before we went up there to the altar <laughs> so i didn't i didn't think anything i'm like don't, don't you have to be 21 to take me here <laughs> no nope, not in uh, no and no, they're no, like no. no second grade bro yeah, you can do it. <laughs> like you can do i it. had no idea yeah. no idea you're older than second i think catholics are second but for us we were older when, when you first were we're yeah, when we were, yeah. I mean, it does, it, when we can take it, communion. That amount does nothing. To a Correct. It's a Correct. tiny, it's nothing. a teaspoon, yeah. right? It's Correct. nothing. But again, I never tasted that in my entire life, right? So when I'm expecting grape juice, the Welsh's grape juice that I'm accustomed to. <laughs> that Jesus shared at the Passover, that, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> exactly. And when I didn't get that, yes, mm-hmm. it absolutely startled me, where I coughed, gasped right, right there at the altar. It was great. So then I want to go to a prank that I did, Adam, last year, okay? So as we were building out our website, and you're part of this prank, but I don't think you ever realized I pulled a prank here. Happy to help. Yes. So as I'm building this website, I am trying to figure it out. I'm staying up late at night trying to piece this thing together, figure out just the technical stuff of how to do a website, and it was... I mean, it felt like it was going to put me in the grave. I was so frustrated. Well, I'm up late at night one time, and I'm trying to put a p- picture and stuff of the book testimonials that we have on the back of our book, You Met Her Where. Mm-hmm. Okay? And there's three testimonials, three quotes on the back of our book. Now, at the time, we didn't have any endorsements. We didn't know anybody that could give us a nice write-up about the book. So, I decided to go a different route. Let's take some of the funny comments that we've heard about us writing a book, okay? One was of your sister. Mm -hmm. We had one of my dad and then one from you, okay? I often come up when people say, I decided to go a different route, whether it's, you know, your book or my wife or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sort of an alternative to a first You've heard that a lot. Yeah, I was like, I decided to go a different route. (laughs) And here's Adam. Let me introduce you to my buddy here. (laughs) So... Adam's quote that he said to me jokingly at Chipotle one day was, I, I think, you, you know, not on here, I think my buddy Kevin has now officially written more books than he's read. <laughs> okay. So I'm putting these on our website, Adam. All right. At the time, I have a professional picture of Katie, Steph's sister. I do not have a professional picture of you or my dad. None okay? exist. Yeah. So I need a placeholder. Okay. <laughs> so I thought... What would be funny? Let me just get a random funny picture, put on the website until I get a until I get a real photo of you as an attorney here in Columbus and my dad from whatever, right? Well, so I go to like the website criminalmugshots.com. Oh. <laughs> so you went a different route. There we go. <laughs> yes. So I get a route. Now I'm gonna show you the website here, okay? Right. This is still on our website today. Okay. Okay. So here is the picture of you. And my dad, Adam <laughs> and my dad. <laughs> wow, that that's that's Manson in the seventies. Right it looks there. like it, yeah, yeah, with my dad. Uh-huh. Yeah, it does, it does. So I'm cackling, laughing. Okay, I also had a fourth one on here just to be funny, and I I did one a quote from your mom and put some like homeless looking woman. As a picture of her. Okay. <laughs> um, my guess is women don't think it's as funny or their <laughs> are replaced. That's exactly right. Okay. So I, I put this on the website. All right. Well, then uh, we had interviewed Pastor Keith Deal for episode 12 last year. And later on, he invited us to come speak at his church. Okay. Well, when we're going to his church, what does his media department do? Oh, comb the website. They comb the website. They've got to do mm-hmm. some research on mm-hmm. who is actually going to be speaking at their church that weekend. Mm-hmm. All right. Coming through the website, and guess what page they go to? <laughs> this page right here with the testimonials. Okay. So, 
<laughs> we <laughs> we drive to the church. We have dinner Saturday night with Pastor Keith Dio and his, and his wife. And he's like, Kev, I got to tell you something. He's like, my media director came to me this week and was like, hey, how well do you know Kevin and Steph? <laughs> he's like, pretty, you know, he's a childhood friend of mine. Pretty, pretty good. And so he shows him this page on the website. And he's like, do you... <laughs> Is, do you think that's really Kevin's dad? And look at his mom. And and Pastor Keith Thiel looks at the website and he sees my dad first. He's like, man, the years have not been good to Pastor Ron. So he's just he's just like shaking his head. And then he goes down to Steph's mother's picture and he's like, okay, that can't be Steph's mom. Like, look at look at Steph. That cannot be Steph's mom. <laughs> then they scroll down to the bottom, and I have this disclaimer on the website, and it says, a few of these images may not accurately depict Kevin's friends and family due to not having a good picture of Adam or Ron to share. We, parentheses Kevin, decided to use whatever hilarious mugshot we, Kevin, could find on the internet. Yeah. So, so then they realize, oh, okay, he's a jokester. Okay, this is a prank. So... He said they got a good laugh at it that day at the church, okay? But I thought it was hilarious that it actually came up like, is this really his family? Is this really his friends? So then the next week, we came home. We were talking to your mom, and we brought this up, the story oh, yeah. up. Well, mm-hmm. I, show, I show the website to Steph's mother, mm-hmm. and as you would expect, mm-hmm. she did not think it was no. funny Mm-mm. at all, no. at all, to the point Mm-mm. where her response was, that's it. Kevin, I'm taking you off my prayer list. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, you better take that down. Like today, when you get home, I'm no longer praying for you at all. Right? You're off it. You're off it. <laughs> but, but think about when people meet you in person. Like, you have turned things yes. around. Look at you. <laughs> you are. Oh, my. What a redemption story. Right. Man, you look so homely <laughs> in this picture. Yes. Yes, you look so much better in person than you do Mm -hmm. on the website, right? And then I showed my dad, and he thought it was hysterically funny. He thought it was very, very funny, and I actually recorded their... I think your dad's words were, what is wrong with you? Yes. That that means... What is wrong with you? Yes. That means... You crushed it, Kevin. Oh, well is that what that that's means? What, that's what, that's I'm going to be saying that a lot yes, then. That means you. I'm very proud of you, son. Well uh-huh. done. All right, Steph, I've got a question for you. What's your favorite book of all time? Uh, obviously, you met her where? Oh, I thought you were going to say the Bible. Oh, oops. <laughs> oh. So what's your second favorite book of all time? You met her where? <laughs> A distant second. <laughs> totally distant. It's a pretty good book. Sorry, God. It's still a pretty, pretty good book. But we're so excited. Where can people get our book, honey? Okay, I know this. Uh, Amazon.com. Yes. Barnes & Noble. Yes, and? And our website, KevinStuff.com. And, and what happens if they buy it off our website? <gasps> what do they get? Uh, an autograph from us. Yes. Who wouldn't want that? So, listeners, if you've already read the book, thank you so much. We've had such good feedback. One thing that helps us, if you can give us a review on Amazon.com, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, and thank you for listening. All right. So let's talk about work pranks. Okay. Okay. So I have two here on my list. Okay. First one is just a finance Excel junkie silly little prank that I used to do with people. This okay. one brought appeal for the audience. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. They're going to love this one. Okay. So when I was in corporate America, right? When I was at Express, okay, when you would leave your desk, your office, you were allowed to keep your workstation on, your computer on. Okay. When I went to JP Morgan Chase, they were very adamant because it was a financial institution. It was a bank based on Based on the role that you had, you could have access to account numbers, customer information, all that. So they were adamant. If you left your desk, you need to just lock out of your computer. Log off, okay? Even if you had to go to the bathroom, if you had to go talk to somebody, go to your boss, log off so someone doesn't look, come to your desk and potentially see some piece of information that is private, okay? Confidential. So at Express... Again, I was younger in my career and would do dumb stuff. Okay, one of the silly things I did, of course, I was an Excel 
I was Excel expert. Okay. That was, that was one thing that I had an advantage on other people. I was really good at Excel. Well, one time went to someone's desk who wasn't there that I was trying to get information on. And she had a really good personality. Her name was Christina. And I decided, okay, I'm going to mess with her Excel spreadsheet that was up. Okay. So I blew up all of the menu items, like all the icons, blew them up to a certain percentage. Okay. So when she came back to her desk, if she had this massive screen, she could only work in her spreadsheet like one and a half inches, right? To be able to do her because all of like the print icon, the copy and paste icon, everything's like blown up massive icons on her screen. Who would think of that? And she only has seriously. She only has like an inch of workspace to actually like be working. She's like, what is this? And so then she's got to figure out like who can help me with this problem because she, you know, Nobody knew Excel that well, right? Uh-huh. So it obviously came back to me. Hey, how do I how do I fix this? And so I come back and fix it. Okay. Another joke I would do with people at work in Excel is if you hit um, Control Alt up arrow or down, we'll say down arrow. Control Alt down arrow, it will turn your screen com- completely upside down. Okay. If you do Control Alt right arrow, it'll do sideways. Okay. So if I was walking by somebody's desk that wasn't there, I would just hit their keyboard, control upside down, and it flips their whole screen upside down and just like keep walking. So when they get back to their desk, they're like, what is this? And they're like putting their head upside down, like trying to put their password in and code. And it's just like, like a really quick yes. prank that I would do on people at Limited Brands. Yes. Just dumb. Right? So many cubicle dwellers live on the edge of snapping anyway. I could see them wandering off and get a coffee and be like, one more thing. One more thing. I swear to God. I, 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 one more thing. I, I will absolutely make them lose my dad. mind. Yeah. <laughs> so I so when I was at Chase, my old boss, Dustin, best boss ever. Okay. But I went upstairs to his office and he had gone to the restroom. Mm, okay. His mistake. Big mistake, right? And he didn't lock his computer. Oh. Okay. So to be funny, what did I mistakenly do? Hit control, alt, down arrow. Okay. Which flips his whole screen upside down. Okay. So he, <laughs> so I leave, don't really think anything about it. Right. Comes back to his desk. He tries to log in and like his login and everything as well is upside down. So he's, he told me he's got his head like upside down trying to type in his password. He gets in and then everything on his computer is upside down and he's just like losing his mind, right? Because he's trying to like, he can't Google like, how do I do this? I mean, it, it throws you for a loop if you don't know how to fix it. So I'm downstairs with my team. He calls my phone and I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm letting this go to voicemail. Oh. And so I'm like, I, I want to hear what he has to say. I, I want this to just marinate a little bit longer, this joke on my boss. And the timing was awful, right? I don't know if he had a deadline he had to get to or what, but he was in no mood to be screwing around at work that day. (laughs) So he calls me, leaves me a nice candid voicemail. Okay. And then it goes to my senior financial analyst. I'm like, no, no, don't answer it. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. Then goes to the the senior company. Like, don't answer it. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. And so he called everybody on my team in a row. So like all four of us. And so I walked upstairs and I said, hey, you need some help with, this, with something? And he he lit me up. He ripped me a new, you know what? I was like, don't you ever blankety blank touch my computer. Ever going to fix this right now. <laughs> right now, fix this. And so I go over, I'm like, control up. And bam, there it is. I'm like, there you go, boss. And he, <laughs> so you went over and grabbed his screen, <laughs> held it upside it down, upside. and said, start typing. <laughs> <laughs> he was not happy. It just bad timing. Probably had a deadline. And <laughs> that prank did not go over well at all. I saw it in my mind playing out completely uh-huh. different. Everyone does. Than what it did. Usually does. <laughs> yes, usually does. So the other prank I remember pulling was on our good friend, Karen Klimas, mm-hmm. who you had met. Mm-hmm. And just awesome, awesome woman to work with. Well, again, this is when I was younger in my career. And... I had a tendency to screw around at, at, at work when did I should have been. Did you work? I did. I promise. Are you sure? I promise. it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At that point, someone had sent me the night before this link to a video. And so I clicked on the video at home and my computer speakers were just like cranked up. Back then we had like these big computer speakers. This is a video 
of this car just like driving around this mountain. It's like has this like very light music in the background. It's like very gentle. I'm like, oh, it's a car commercial. And then all of a sudden, this monster jumps out at you and screams screams, this like bloody murder scream. Okay, on your on your screen. Well, my computer speakers are were blasted loud, and so. I mean, it's like 10 o'clock at night. I'm checking my email and I jump, like, jump out of my chair, right? Because this like very calm looking car. I'm like, oh, what kind of car is this? I'm looking at it. And then this monster just jumps into your face immediately. And so I was like, okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Of course, I have to forward that to my work email address <laughs> immediately. <laughs> so next day, I'm like, who can I send this to that will have a great reaction? Okay. And... Who can I send this to that's not going to fire me (laughs) on the spot? Okay. So let's go down the chain versus up the chain. We learned. Okay. So why don't I send it to my good friend, Karen Klimas? All right. And at that time, I wasn't working with her um, directly like I had previously. So she was in another room over at Lemon Brands, L Brands now. So I think she was in the like Victoria's Secret part of, of the building. I was at Express. So I sent it to her curious how that's going to go. Okay. And she was really, she was one of those like jittery people where if you came up like, Hey, you know, Karen, like, you know, touch her shoulder, she would freak out. Right. Or you know, throw papers everywhere. Just you could do that. Right. Very jittery. So I'm like, I'm hoping this is, this goes as well as I think it is. Okay. <laughs> so I send her this email, another part of the building and come to find out when I sent this to her, uh, I'd send it, Hey, what do you think about this car? Do you think I would look good in this car? She said she had her earphones on oh. at work, okay? And at L Brands at the time, they had a shared services. So think of like cube after cube after cube in this humongous, humongous room, right? We'll say 100 people, 100 cubes in this room, okay? It's very quiet, very professional. And so I send this to her. And so she's looking at the screen like, oh, I, th- I think that might be a good car for Kevin. And all of a sudden, this monster jumps out. And she's got her earphones on. <laughs> and she just... And it's dead quiet, and all of a sudden, in this room, it's like, ah! like she screams, she screams bloody murder because this thing jumps out at her, and so nobody can hear this monster because she's got her earbuds in, right? But all of a sudden, at Victoria's Secret home office, you hear this human being just like this blood curling scream in the accounting department. Wexner's taking a tour of the area. <laughs> Right. So she said she rips off her headphones and she's and then she does a beeline over to the other part of the building and she comes over to me. She's like, you will not believe what you just did to me. Like she was so embarrassed because it was like dead quiet. And all of a sudden, like blood curling scream because it scared her. So I got her pretty good. That that. was good. That That was was good. good. I like that one. So. Can you talk about the prank I pulled on you, Steph, at the very first Christmas party you attended uh, with me at, at my dad's house when we were dating? So were we dating or we, we were just dating. got married? Okay, no, no, we were dating. It was our was it our first Christmas maybe together? Probably was. So we're driving to your dad's house, he and his wife's house, and on the way there, you're like, "Hey, I just want to let you know that my dad got you a gift." I'm like. Oh, that is so nice. You didn't have to do that. I know. But hey, he's not very good with giving gifts. Like, but you just have to be very appreciative and thankful no matter what he's got you. Instantly, that sets me off. Steph's mad. I'm like, first of all, I know how to be gracious when receiving gifts. I'm like, why are we even having these conversations? No, you're not. You're like, Steph, I just want you to be thankful and just show him how appreciative you are. I'm like, dad's known for giving some weird random gifts. So if you get something you don't like, please just act like you like it. And let me know in the car later, right? If I need to get the gift receipt or we need to take it back. I'm like, just please be kind not to hurt his feelings if he gets something that you don't like. And I was instantly ticked. You were instantly completely ticked. offended I'm like, what? That, I, that I would even bring that up. Don't even bring that up. Like... I know how to handle these situations. Like for him to even think about getting me a gift that was so nice of him, no matter what, I will be very thankful and appreciative of this gift. Yes. Right? So we go in, we have a nice dinner, it's time for gifts. And all of a sudden, 
Ron says, hey, Stephanie, I got you something. I'm like, oh, that was so nice Ron, of you. Ron, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was so nice of you. So I open it up, and it's this jacket. And I was like, oh. And I could have won an academy that day. I mean, Steph, but the jacket was something you got from the Salvation Army, and, Goodwill. And, that's, and, and that was completely right? fine. It, it was, was completely, it was really pretty hideous, right? Well, it was it was, it was really bad, but it was also <laughs> maybe like t- it might have fit our daughter Emmy. Like it was super <laughs> tiny. And I'm like, ah. Oh! He's like, yeah, I was really hoping it would fit. I'm like, bet it will. He's like, why don't you try it on? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I just started dating Kevin that past summer, and I'm like. Would love to. Well, I felt like Tommy in that. T- you know what I'm talking Tommy about? Tommy boy. Oh, yeah. Tommy boy. Yeah, when he's Big trying to put coat. on like his suit coat. So I'm like putting it on, and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I think it fits. Like I was trying so hard. The asphyxiation hard. Right. This is really comfortable. <laughs> and my dad and I are like, oh my gosh, it fits you so good. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Like oh no. we're to the hey fashion show, fashion show. Like put it on, and, and so Steph puts it on, and then of course it does not fit. All we're like, oh my gosh, it looks so good on you. Do you want to go see it in the mirror? No, I'm good. I'm good. Oh my gosh, it even looks better than I expected. But then Steph's like, because we had this conversation, of course my sweet, kind, does not want to offend anybody wife here was like over the top. Thank you so much, Ron. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. Do you like it? Oh, you shouldn't have. Thank you so much. You shouldn't have. How did you know? And it like constantly, thank you so much. And Steph's like hugging, you know, hugging everybody. Well, I could barely thank move you. my arms. I felt hugging, like a T Rex. Yeah. Like I couldn't really move T-Rex my arms. Yeah. <laughs> so then we finally informed you that this was a joke. And you're just like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Thank God. I don't yeah. have to keep like do I have to keep this kind of give this back to yeah, you. Yeah, who can who can wear this right now? <laughs> oh my gosh. But it was like I was crying laughing, seeing the reaction of my wife, like, thank you so much, Ron. Oh, like, yeah. You shouldn't have. You really shouldn't have. <laughs> really. Anything else you want to discuss before we get to small town news? Oh, I'm nervous about small town news. Mm-hmm. I'm nervous. And why are you nervous? Because last time Adam went over, Adam. Okay, so you start doing small town news and like, oh, this is great. This is great. And then you keep going and I'm, I am like, I start going down in my chair. Like, oh, he's going there, Adam. He's going there. I'm Push like the squeezing Kevin. And I'm like, oh, Kevin. Adam, we like, were on the Zoom call and Steph's like squeezing my leg. And then we get off the phone. I'm like, Steph, we can edit anything out, honey. Like we have creative control over this process. But okay? you still didn't edit so, it all out. No. So... A lot of what he said I thought was hysterically funny. However, it could probably be categorized maybe as locker room talk. Mm -hmm. Okay? And again, it made me laugh. I thought it was funny. I left it in. Okay? We talked to a producer. You did not want it in. Nope. Our producer's like, I could go either way, Kevin. He's like, I think it's funny. You either include the whole thing or take the whole thing out. I'm like, okay, we're going to include the whole thing. So we included it. And within like three days, Adam, I got five complaints <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> from people who were shocked that we had left that joke. Uh-huh. In. I'm okay. a voice of a new generation. <laughs> I know. I, I know. <laughs> and so after the fifth complaint, I'm like, you know what? Let me see if we can mute one word oh. out of that joke. Mute. Oh. Okay. So I reach out to producer. I'm like, hey, we've, we've got a few complaints here. Is there any way we can mute this one word? He's like, let me see what I can do. So he mutes the one word because if we beeped it out... Yeah. Then it made your joke sound like you said something really bad, yeah. right? And you didn't. And I didn't. No. You didn't. No. Not at all, right? So we muted it, and then he had to repost it across all the social media platforms for us, and then it was a pain in the neck to do, right? But he did it, and then the day after he did it, I get a text message from Mr. Adam Bennett here saying, "Somebody censored my <laughs> joke." Uh-huh. Somebody said <laughs> like jokes because are like my kids because <laughs> because whatever you listen to did not align to the draft that I'd sent you, uh-huh. of course, before we published it. So you sent it to me, I, and then I explained to you, hey, we had a few complaints, and I thought the best way to handle this was let's mute this one word to still keep the joke, 
um, just part of that small town news. And you're like, can I post on social media here <laughs> that if anybody wants to listen to the real joke to direct message me? And I'm like, you know what? Nobody cares, but yeah, go ahead. And then, so it's not five minutes later. You're on social media. You tag me on your post. Like, if anybody, I've been censored. If anybody wants to hear the real joke, hit me up on a direct message. And so I just thought it was so funny. So, I mean, just you doing that alone, I thought was hilarious. <laughs> the bleep was so long. It sounded like I was doing the Carlin routine of the seven <laughs> words in a row because he just started, just kept bleeping and bleeping. Like, wow, this guy is on a stream of profanity. That must be. So in a way, it had this weird effect where, man, he just went off. It started out tame, and he just lost it. <laughs> Does Kevin's friend have Tourette's all of a sudden? Is a that what happened? Second bleep. <laughs> That's all right. So, with that being said, we are back for a second round of Small Town News. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, yep. here we go, Mr. Adam Bennett. All right, Adam, yes. I'm nervous. Thank you. Adam Bennett here. Uh, from the former village, now city of Johnstown, Ohio, here's Small Town News. Gary, Indiana. Oh, boy. Here we go. Home of the Jacksons. We were talking about that. Oh, really? That's true. Huh. Yes. The Jackson uh, 5. Wow. Uh, all right. Well, Gary's back in the news after the Jacksons. The Jingle Johns were back this Christmas, in case you missed it. The singing porta potties brought to you by Indiana Sanitation Service have set a world record while singing Hallelujah to the end of 2020. According to their marketing manager, Stevie Dykstra, it's all about achieving a new wow factor every year. Um, follow up question. Don't porta potties already come with a built in wow factor? <laughs> I mean, you poke your head in thinking it's going to be okay, and you go, wow! <laughs> I would rather attempt a dump directly into a running wood chipper. I've never opened one and not said, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, kids, you're going in there alone. You're the one who has to use it, not me. <laughs> All right. A dedicated listener sent me this lead. Uh oh. You will, uh, you'll recognize it. There have been multiple deaths from gender reveal yes. parties. We were talking about we this. Were just was it talking yesterday? About, yes. How dramatic these gender reveal parties have been, and we we did this t a decade ago. Yes. Right. With actually, I swear we were like one of the first ones to ever do it. I think you you were on right? the leading of, of edge. our friend yes. of our friends. We were one no of one the first ones. No one talked about doing. I never this. did. We one. had found it. We're like, let's do this. And we had Adam's wife, Cody. Yes. Make the cake. Just very simple. Yes. Yeah. Very simple. Hey. Non-lethal. Yes. Yes. Let's, let's cut open a cake and see if it's pink or blue That's inside. It. And we'll go from there. Not let's make a real cannon, yes. right? Or fireworks or blow off your hand. But yeah, they've been like catastrophic here. It just like. I don't know if everyone just has to top each other on I these gender reveal it. parties. I, like make it bigger and everything's better. Everything's competition. Did yeah. you guys do it for all your kids? No. no. Just the first one. Just first. Yeah, after that, we're like, hey, we're good. Yeah. Just tell us. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a father-to-be from New York State has died after a device he was building for his child's gender reveal party exploded, according to police. He was assembling the device in the town of Liberty in New York State when it exploded uh, just before noon on Sunday. Police said the blast killed the man and injured his brother, who was taken to the hospital. The death is the latest in a string of catastrophes to be linked to gender reveal parties in recent years. Several large-scale parties have gone wrong, even revolting in several deaths. The one I think you were talking about was a man from Michigan was killed earlier after he was struck by shrapnel from a small <laughs> cannon-type device oh. fired during a baby shower, police oh. said. I, I think the obvious follow-up question for, for both incidents is... What color was the exit wound? <laughs> Come on. We still got to know. Team pink or team blue? <laughs> I, I realize it's a tragedy. We got a nursery to paint, people. <laughs> okay. Next one. If you enjoy mocking stupid celeb names and Instagram influencers, this is a story for you. Blogger and Instagram influencer Sasha Benz gave birth nearly three years ago to Baby Blue Benz. Now, that name will be important because all was apparently well until fellow influencer Jessica Hart gave birth this past November and announced she was going with Baby for her newborn's name as well, causing some friction between Benz and Hart, who had both named their kids Baby, Baby. as a first name. Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't know what an influencer is. I'm just reading that part. 
So, yes, Jessica Hart, who is an Australian model, named her child Baby Ray Kirkham. An interesting note is the dad of Baby Ray Kirkham is NASCAR's James Kirkham. This Kirkham guy is a driver for NASCAR. <laughs> he should have a sponsorship deal lined up to name this kid before it was born. He should have knocked down whatever nonsense that mom was pitching and said, Hey, babe, the kid's name is going to be Monster Energy Mango Rush, all right? <laughs> At least through kindergarten. It's a six-year deal. I already signed the papers. You want your cut or not? Baby. I like that. I actually like that. I like that one, Adam. Yeah. That's terrible. Baby. Baby. That's worse than the Kardashians and and Kanye West. Yeah. (laughs) North-South. All the Cardinal directions? Or um, Cam Newton, chosen one. His his son. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. When we were kids, the weirdest was George Foreman, naming them all George (laughs) Foreman. Yes. That's true. That is definitely. uh, That is all I have. Steph, anything else you want to talk about? No. No. This was fun. Adam, we appreciate you. So much. So much saying yes to us on a whim. You're more than willing to (laughs) show up here, have a conversation with us, and make fun of us at any time. So, buddy, thank you. Certainly. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like to support this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts. You can rate and review this episode. Also, for those who have asked us how to financially support, you can go to kevinandsteph.com and order one of our books of You Met Her Where. Thank you so much for listening to Tell Us a Good Story. 